Hey everybody, Mr. Kobe here. I'm gonna do a demonstration of our dialysis lab activity. And this right here is dialysis tube. Oops. It kind of just looks like a piece of flat plastic. It doesn't really look like a tube. But what I've already done is I soaked another piece in water and uh, just to show you if I rub my fingers, uh, it actually is a tube. You can rub your finger, you know, you rub your fingers while it's soaked in water. I tied a knot in the bottom. You can see I tied a knot in the bottom. I just added some water here and you can see, yeah, it's inflated. Uh, it, it really is a tube. So even though it looked like just a piece of flat plastic, it really is a tube. Now, dialysis membrane is kind of interesting because the membrane is also semi-permeable. You can't see them. They're way too small. But there's little tiny pores, little tiny holes, pores in the membrane. And because it's semi-permeable, some molecules are able to pass in and out through the pores of this dialysis membrane. And that's going to be the experiment that we're going to be doing. We're going to try to figure out uh, which molecules can pass through the pores of this membrane. We put it back in the, uh, in, in, in the watery cup over here first. So ultimately, what we're going to try to figure out is this is a bottle of glucose. Can glucose pass through the dialysis membrane? This is a bottle of starch. Can starch pass through the dialysis membrane? And this is a bottle of a dropper filled with iodine. Can iodine pass through the dialysis membrane? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to fill a dialysis membrane with five milliliters of starch, five milliliters of glucose. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And what I did was I took the dialysis membrane that I showed you earlier and I added, used a graduated cylinder, I added five milliliters of starch and five milliliters of glucose. So right now there's about 10 milliliters when you add it up. There's about 10 milliliters inside of this dialysis membrane. Again, five milliliters of starch, five milliliters of glucose. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this dialysis membrane in this cup of water and make sure that it's submerged. And you can see the other end, the open end is just dangling outside the cup. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my iodine here, my iodine, I'm gonna add about 30 drops. Doesn't have to be exact, but I'm gonna add about 30 drops of iodine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Hey, you know what they say, one for good luck. Here we go. One extra drop for good luck. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this cup, this testing cup here, I'm going to let it sit. And the longer I can let it sit, the better. Now remember, what we're trying to figure out is I got these three uh, molecules here, starch, iodine, and glucose. I'm trying to figure out which of these are able to pass through the dialysis membrane. I know there's starch inside the membrane. I added five milliliters. Does it diffuse out into the cup? I don't know, we'll see. You just saw me add iodine into the cup, into the watery cup. But does the iodine that is right now in the watery cup, does it diffuse into the dialysis membrane? I don't know, we have to wait and we'll see in a moment. And then glucose. I added five milliliters of glucose into the dialysis membrane. So does glucose diffuse outward into the cup? I don't know. We have to wait and find out. So I'm going to let this sit for 20, 30 minutes or so. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back in a moment. So before I go back to the dialysis membrane, I want to just draw this on the whiteboard. This is kind of a drawing of where we stand. Uh, so we've got a cup filled with iodine and water, and in the dialysis membrane, 
is five milliliters of glucose, five milliliters of starch. The glucose and starch are all mixed together. It's not like they're layered and sitting on top of one another like my drawing. And so what I'm trying to figure out, does glucose come out? I don't know. We'll have to see if there's a way to test for that. I have to figure out, does starch come out of the dialysis membrane and into the cup? I don't know. We'll have to figure out a way to test. And iodine. I know there's iodine in the water. Does iodine go into the dialysis membrane? Uh, again, I'm not going to give the answer away. There has to be a way for us to figure this out. But these are really the three big questions we're going to explore. Okay, so I want to show a couple observations before we go back to showing the results. So first of all, I want to show you what happens when starch and iodine mix. Here's a graduated cylinder filled with starch. If you notice, if I put on the black part of the table right here, see starch is kind of a cloudy, milky white color. And I'm going to leave it there on the black part of the table so we can see better. And iodine, you, I'm sure you know, has like an orange bronze color. But when I add some iodine into the starch, let's see what happens. Uh, one, two, let's add three drops. And notice if I kind of hold it up to the camera here, shake it up a little bit, you can see like a blackish color, and, and it's actually a, a blackish and a little bit of a purple tint to it uh, forms. If I again shake it up and swirl it up a little bit, maybe if I put it against, yeah, it almost looks black on my camera, but it's a, a blackish, purplish color begins to form. So when starch and iodine mix, that's what you might see. When starch and iodine mix, you see like this blackish, and I don't know if you can tell if it shows well in the camera, and I don't think it does, but it almost has like a purplish color. So that's one observation right there. Starch and iodine make that color when they mix. Now if I move over here, I have two beakers. One of them is a glucose solution on the left, and one of them is just distilled water. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use these testing pads right here, these testing strips. Now this is a glucose test strip. And you can see the tip of the pad has a blue colored pad on it. And so if I dip this into the solutions, what this will do, it will react if there's glucose present. So first of all, I'm going to dip it in the one of distilled water. Because this is distilled water, there should not be any glucose in here. Swirl it back and forth. There we go, and I'm just gonna set it right there for now. And then I'm gonna take another one, here's another one, a fresh one, and I'm gonna swirl this one into a mixture that has glucose. I know there's glucose in here, I made it up earlier. So it's a mixture with glucose. Take it out, and again, let it sit. And if I look at the colors, you can already see that there's a color change. The one on the left, which I know there was glucose in the solution, turned colors, and the one on the right didn't. And here's a fresh one. So this one that I'm shaking right now is fresh. It's never been used. Uh, I don't know how well the colors, don't, it doesn't look like the colors show up very well. There we go. Um, you can see there, that this one on the right is fresh. It's never been used. And it looks just like the one on the left, which has been used. So that tells me there's no glucose in this. And that's fine, there's not supposed to be. This is distilled water. And now if I take the fresh one that's never been used, here it is on the right, never been used, compare it to the one on the left, you can see there's a clear color change. There's a clear, obvious difference color change. Well, that's because I dipped it in glucose and I knew there was glucose. Now, the pad might not always turn brown. If I hold up uh, this right here, you can see... Um, if there's no glucose on the left, the pad's going to be blue. And you can see if there's a little bit of glucose, it's that greenish color. A medium amount of glucose is like that olive color. And if there's a lot of glucose, it's the brown color. So it might not turn brown. Uh, but if the pad even turns a green color, that means there's glucose present. If it turns an olive color, that means there's glucose present. Okay, I'm going to pause and we're going to go back to our experiment. Okay, so here are the results. I actually got a little busy, and it's kind of just been sitting here longer than I had actually thought, which is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. The longer it sits, the more vivid the results. Um, 
I, I intended to let it sit for about 20 minutes, but it's actually been a little over an hour. So uh, first thing I want to do, I want to hold up the dialysis bag. You can see, hey, there's, there's, a, there's something inside that wasn't there before. You can see that there's a dark purplish color inside of the dialysis bag, the dialysis membrane. That, that color wasn't there before, um, but it, it's, it's there now. So my hope is, based on what we've seen throughout this video, you can explain why is that dark purplish color there It wasn't there before. Now I'm going to leave the dialysis bag just right here and I'll clean up the mess afterwards. Um, but if I look in the testing cup, the testing cup still has that same orangish bronze color, you know, from the iodine. I don't see anything different. There's no spots. There's nothing built up at the bottom. There's no color change. So the iodine water mixture that's in the cup looks normal. It's just that same orange bronze color. Well, that's an observation right there. I hope you know what that might imply. And the last thing I wanna do, I have two of those glucose testing strips. I'm only gonna use one. I'll use this one right here. And I'm just gonna swirl it back and forth. Give it a second, tap it dry. And the one on the left, I just used. The one in, on the right, right here, that I'm shaking in front of the camera, I've never used. So there's the one on the left that's been used. Now here comes a fresh one that I've never used before. And I hope it shows up nicely on the camera. I think it does. Um, I can see, again, um, from just looking around the camera, that the one on the left is more of a greenish color than what it started as. The one on the right is, the one on the right right here is fresh. It's never been used. It has that same blue color as before, but uh, the colors don't look too good right now. But the one on the left, come on iPhone, you can do it. There it goes, I think that looks better. The one on the left is clearly a uh, change colors. That tells me something. When I swirled this glucose testing strip in the iodine water, it turned colors. That should tell me something. Okay, so based on the observations I just explained, and if you have to rewind the video and watch it again, you should be able to answer all the questions in your lab handout that you have right here. All right, thanks for watching. Hope that helped.